Happy New Year. It has been a minute since I've published a video tutorial, any kind of like guide on the channel. I've been busy at work, honestly, on the Rails UI stuff I'm working on. If you haven't heard of that, it's at railsui.com. Let me pull it up. It will be something like this, professionally designed UI components and templates made for Ruby on Rails. So think kind of like Tailwind UI, but a hybrid approach that's kind of integrated to Rails. Anyway, not to just self-promote like crazy, uh, this, this video is going to be more about the um, idea of bringing YAML into your application for the sake of not necessarily needing to dial in data into the database that's going to be like local to your app. So a lot of times in the Ruby world or the Rails world, there's configuration files that are maintained in a YAML file. And that's, I would say, pri you know, primarily in this world, like you go to the JavaScript world, it's, it's less that maybe it's more of a JSON style file or something like that where there's this actual configuration uh, to tap into. And I think that's just the nature of the language you're using. So with Ruby, it's pretty easy to parse YAML um, just based on how Ruby works. So that's why I think it's a standard or something you see more often. I'm gonna show you basically what I did to build out what uh, FAQ section on my course. I, everything you see here, the thumbnails, all this module stuff is actually YAML. I, di I didn't feel like I needed to like install or you know add it to a database really um and you know make that make that an official thing that lives in some database filling up space so instead i i used a combination of files that include yaml structured yaml and um, just output it with ruby uh, just like you would from the database so this guide's going to be more or less kind of going across the same spectrum of the faq here now I'm not gonna go crazy styling it, but I just wanted to show you what's possible. So you don't have to always like think about creating a new model for something when you when you actually create an app and there's more to a Rails app than you know meets the eye. So to get started, you really don't need any other dependencies than Ruby. So um, it comes pre-baked with this YAML approach where I'll just uncomment this. I have this little method in here. For the sake of time, I just went and pasted it in, but I called it parse YAML. And the idea is it's gonna open a file with Ruby using the IO structure of Ruby. It's a part of the, the language and its own little framework. And then from that, there's a YAML adapter, I guess you call it, I'm not hundred percent, but it would be able to load that file dynamically and parse it in such a way that makes you able to output it in another fashion. So what we're gonna do is take YAML, output it to an ERB view or an HTML, in other words. So right now on my local host, I, I have the bare bones Rails 7 app. I just installed it from scratch. So I said Rails generates controller static and it would be, what do we call it, FAQ. There we go. So now we should get that um, get request that's dynamically added. So instead of just having that little get one liner, I'm gonna just add a root to it for now. That should open up the door of just this one page. Now, when I installed my application, I did install Tailwind CSS as a default CSS language. Um, you can do Bootstrap, I think Bulma, other stuff. It's mostly just because I use Tailwind these days. Nothing, nothing you need for this video. But that's our page there. That's serving from this controller now. So we have this FAQ method. And then that's being piped down to a views folder and a static folder in the FAQ page. So seemingly what we're going to do this would be something like you'd go to, I mean, realistically, it wouldn't be a root path. You'd go to like slash FAQ maybe, but in my case, like on the courses page, it was all one page. It's just a long page. So, it, you know, there's always a root um, association there. So in this case, we have our FAQ file. Great. So what I want to be able to do is say like FAQs dot each do FAQ and then like output each in some manner, you know, like I want it to be maybe a list or just a grouping, maybe detail summary kind of thing with HTML. So where we get kind of maybe hung up here is, okay, usually this comes from a database and from the controller level, we're usually like going to say like FAQ where blah, blah, blah. Well, we don't do that with, with um, YAML. So instead we can go back to our application controller. Or if you think in terms of hierarchy, this is the, the parent level controller, well, in, in our application, but it's also a child of action controller base. So that essentially means I get, get used, I can use this method in any other controller in our app since we are inheriting from that controller respectively. 
So in this case, I could say uh, FAQs equals parse YAML and then pass in a file here. So some sort of file in our directory of our app. So what I would do typically in this case is um, make some sort of folder, probably outside of the spectrum of the app folder and maybe just at the root level and just make it like, I don't know, static data. You can call it whatever. For my case in the course, I called it just like a course folder and it had uh, YAML files in it. So then here we could say faqs.yaml, so YML. I should open it here. I have these FAQs from the actual course, so I don't have to you know, go through and type them all. That would be rec ridiculous to show on screen. So, And what I'm gonna do is, if you look at the structure of this, um, each grouping is gonna be pre you know, prefaced with a dash or a hyphen. And that kind of is a, a way to instruct that that's like an object with the way you would output it. Um, I'm not necessarily sure if it's like an object or what kind of syntax it is, but under the hood, that's Ruby's identifying it as, but YAML is being parsed in such a way uh, to where if you group it, as you see here, so like a question and answer, like a typical FAQ, you could be, you can add those properties. So, and you can nest these too, if you wanted to go deeper, like maybe there's answer um author i don't know if someone says something and then name so you could go deeper depending on whatever level you want that's that's just unique to how you want to output it and what kind of data you want to have in here typically with yaml you want to keep it pretty simple so if it gets complex like ridiculously complex you might think of a, another strategy than this it would be my recommendation but in our case in this case i'm going to do uh we can go into the the rails maybe i'll do a console and show you how you can tap into the, the actual folder structure of the Rails app. So you can say you have this namespace of Rails to begin with. So Rails root should output the path to your actual um, local folder of your app. So that's that's unique to your machine. Um, here's how mine looks. So if you do this, it'll probably look a little bit different because your name is not mine. And wherever you're, you're housing your code, you know, will be somewhere else maybe. Um, but what we'll need to do is notice that's a path name. So we want to probably do it to like a to, to a string. So it comes back as something like that. And that essentially allows us to use file level structure to open and, and close files like we're doing in our um, application controller here. So we're going to pass that file through right here. And then YAML is going to load it, but it needs to be open from a file with Ruby. So we need to do that in, in like a relative pathway instead of like something remotely. So we'll say rails root to string. And then I believe we'll want to do this. Like, so we want to interpolate. So I'll just pass it all as a string and then this here. And then we'll do the actual file namespace of where it's going to be. So remember we named it static data or data and then FAQ YML. So you need to kind of be explicit with that. So that gives us what should be, you know, our um, path to the folder. And it, to test this theory, we can go and right back into the console and it'll output that file. So that's true and is where that actual file is at. And that's one way to confirm. You could also just load up the view and hope and pray. So if we get FAQ here, it's going to output a, I had a typo. So let me fix that real quick. It should be FAQs. That should load it. So now we get this hash syntax that comes back, which is just native to Ruby and how that could, you know, return. You could also probably do it like a to JSON or whatever you want to do to change that. Um, and this is a little different than like the, the dot notation you might be used to. So an answer might not actually pr come back. It'll be an error. So you would need to do something like so to get that to come back. So there you go. So now with each thing, we could do uh, details. And then summary. This is just like some fancy HTML stuff you could do. So FAQ, uh, let's see, um, question. And this could just be div. 
So now we get our FAQ. Obviously, I'm not going to style this like crazily. Maybe I'll offset it. Real quick there. And that gives us our little bitty FAQs, which is pretty handy. Maybe I'll, you know, we could do three rounded border just to get something going here. Cool. And I mean the summary. Right on. So obviously knock yourself out and styling this, but that's essentially how I would resort to adding data, you know, that necessarily doesn't need to be in the database uh, to your, you know, views. Now you notice here, I do have markdown. That is something additional you can add from like a gem. Um, I did, I think I use um, red carpet is the gem I use to do that. It essentially parses it for you and then outputs it. Um, that's a whole nother guide. I think I have another video on that. You can check out, I might link to it if I'm having enough time to do that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it. So just wanted to run that by you. I figured as a cool quick tip to show what is possible with rails, just out of the box. You just need this little sophisticated little uh, YAML uh, class that has a load method on it. From there, you pipe through a file that it gets opened from the Ruby file system part of the language. And then from your controller, you can pass through the file itself. Now you don't even need, like you could do this right in line your controller, but I put it here because it's probably something you'll reuse. You could use it in other controllers. So the idea is to inherit that and just have this always accessible. And then from there, you just you definitely need to pass through like the, the relative path to your file instead of something that's more like um, you know, indirect, so to speak. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, recommend doing something like this with any kind of data. You just like, you don't see yourself, uh, needing to really, um, add to a database or change over time. It's way easier to update from like a, a singular perspective as someone who authored that course, the FAQs do, do change, but like little things like, uh, the version numbers and stuff like that, I update real fast and just do a get push and it goes to my server and I'm done. So it's awesome. All right. I hope that was helpful. I'll see you guys next time.